When I was 13, I joined my first demonstrations in France. The students were all on the street, and they were demonstrated against the uh, up-and-coming university reforms. The government was threatening to raise the tuition fees. They were also uh, threatening to uh, admit students selectively and also to abolish state diplomas. Students were not happy and everybody was on the street. It was in 1986. And rapidly the demonstration got out of hand. Sadly, in December 1986, one day, a young man called Malik Usekin was at the wrong time in the wrong place and got killed, savagely beaten by the police. I was 13, and on that day I woke up. And during the next 50 years, I um, wanted to do my bit. I wanted to, I was interested in social change, and I joined voluntary organizations and demonstrations, did politics, and sorts of debates. But I didn't really know what I could do for change. A part of me thought that the solutions were probably in the hands of people that were much bigger than me. And I still wanted to do my bit. I was committed to do, you know, to be part of that change. And the other part of me was absolutely convinced I should be that kind of woman. Come on. Do uh, you know fighting uh, evil forces, fighting evil people, and doing the right thing? But uh, in reality, I was doing a bit more of this, <laughs> going around in circle and doing a bit more, much more of the same, which is not much. And it was quite um, saddening, really. So I'd like to use this platform, this TEDx platform, and you all to just, just exchange ideas how we can stop just spinning around and start moving on from that and start doing things that change for real. We all have ideas. What do we do? So I'd like to ask you, hands up, if you've been witnessing in your own households, yourselves, or in your own communities, in your own neighborhoods, cases of violence, Domestic violence, hunger, um, disabilities, pain, illness, despair, mental illness. We all have a fight to lead. Hands up if you'd like to stamp your feet, actually, because these things never really seem to change. We all kind of protest the same shit all the time. Don't you do that? Hands up, anyone? Hands up? Any In fact, you know what? I'd like to hear from you what are the things you've been witnessing. So I'm going to have to not divide, but just partition the room. It's not like I had in my plan, but... This side of the room, can you say loudly what is it that you've witnessed and that you want to change? Can you say loudly? Don't be shy. Whisper it first and then say it louder. It's just the first row, just like with competition between the three of them. Then I promise you that I'll have prizes for the loudest people. So over here, just name one thing and you'll be covered by the other voices anyway. What, are, what is it that you witnessed, that, you, that one thing that you want to change? Someone else? Come on, come on, come on. What do you want to change? What inequality? What, inequality? what is? What kind of inequality? Come on, man, you. And someone else, thank you. And someone else? And someone else? Can you all say that together? A uh, three, I'll count. Three, two, one. I guess it's a nervous laugh. Can you start again? <laughs> Come on, one, two, three. Okay, this is the time when I ask you to drop your glasses, to stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Drop your glasses, the, one, the ones with the wine in it, drop your glasses. The ones you're wearing on your nose for some of you. 
and undo your hair and start spinning with me. Come on, like this. <laughs> I dreamed of this all my life. <laughs> All right, and now stamp your feet for these things. These, if you have any, come stamp your feet. <laughs> so I want to tell you, you can sit down now. It's fine. <laughs> this is called tantrum physics. I'm going to explain to you about tantrum physics. Normally, normally I do that much later in the night, which means that people are much louder. <laughs> But I'm sure that considering the subjects that you've been raising, there's a lot of things to be dealt with, okay? What is tantrum physics? Mm. Well, the world never, never comes up the way we want it to turn. And sometimes people expect us to be like this or like that, but it doesn't really, really work out the way we want to work. It clashes. That's tantrum physics for you. And scientists have done, uh, scientists have done, uh, scientists have done research around ten, um, uh, tantrums, and the, they discovered that the only thing that generates is anger, and sadness, really, nothing much more than that. They also generate a lot of adrenaline, which is very bad for thinking. So, what do you do with that? In fact. I realized that I, despite the tantrums, I always wanted to feel very much alive. You know, do my bit. So how do you do that? Uh, when the millennium came about, I realized that it's not a tantrum I need to throw to make my voice heard. What I needed to do and what I needed to have actually was love. Um, in 2000, I met a man in Brazil who was quite angry, but he was doing something about it. And he was a trained journalist, he was a drummer, a famous lyricist, and a social and political activist. His name was Marcelo Yuka. He was behind um, some of the most fabulous projects around social changes in Brazil, uh, raising awareness around social injustice, prisons, um, all sorts of uh, terrible things happening in corruption, state corruption, um, corporate corruption. And I was in shock because this guy had all the same idea I had, nice, but in the right order. And what do you do with it? Did it have it happen to you when everything falls into place? Loves and ideas? Fantastic. So he gave me an advice, which is to just do what you have to do. That was thrilling. But at the end of November, uh, in November 2000, he got shot. Nine bullets. He was trying to save a um, mother and a daughter who were being robbed at gunpoint gun violence, precisely one of the things he was campaigning against. And he survived, but lost his legs, lost his ability to drum, to surf, be free as a bird as he used to be. And he said, I was convicted of a crime I never committed, and I will never be free again of that conviction. There is the male gender, and I'm, in a, I'm a man in a wheelchair gender. But do you think that stopped him? He's still with us now, 13 years later, and he never stopped. He never stopped nagging people and trying to find ways to find peace for himself and for others. And he's still doing the most amazing projects, the social enterprise projects, and the most amazing artistic projects. An inspiration, really. Um, he 
even run for deputy mayor of um, Rio last year, uh, putting his own artistic life at risk. And he contributed to, to make a lot of disruptions in what we call the Rio Spring. Don't know if you heard of it. And it was an inspiration to me. And I think Marcelo is the perfect example of someone I would qualify as punk. Why punk? Well, we all need a little bit of punk. We all need a little punk around us. Why is that? You would say to me, what punks have got to do with it? They're dead. They're old. 70s, you know. No, punks have always been the ones who push for change. So Marcelo is the biggest punk I've ever met. And from knowing him, I just realized that to create my own path, well, I needed two things. I needed to find love, express love, find the things I would do for love and turning them into gold. And on the other side, stay surrounded by punks, people who push for change. So for the last years, I've been working with women social entrepreneurs. That's my path, amazing punks. Uh, women social entrepreneurs are women who do things for love. They don't qualify themselves, don't per se label themselves as revolutionaries, but they are uh, fixing broken systems. They are women and men like you, well, they're women like you and me, and they uh, work with people, sometimes in the shadows, the people, the invisible, and they do things for love. They are making sure that people are fully recognized civic, political, and social contributors, and not labeled as second-class citizens. So for women social entrepreneurs, like for Marcelo and for myself, love is a political weapon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a rebel in my thumb. <laughs> so peace, love, and punks. One of the main lessons I had from meeting with Marcelo and talking to him, and I still, we still talk, is that you can't die trying. You've got to do something about what's important to you. And if you don't do anything, just move on. Don't talk about it. It's a waste of time. We, how, we all have tantrums. We make some noises. We stamp our feet. It works. doesn't work. The, work. the world might not, you know, just be the way we want it to be. And we might not be the way others, other people want us to be. But it doesn't matter. And in fact, we might not even change the world tomorrow. We do care, though. We do care. So I think that we're still able to be full contributors because we can connect with each other and we can let the love flow. It is easy. So what I want us to do now, you know you couldn't get away with it. You'd have to work a little bit harder. is a one-minute social enterprise revolution. You don't have to write a business plan right now, don't worry. But do you remember the tantrum we all had, that little mini, 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 low-key tantrum we had five minutes ago when some of you um, gratefully expressed what they wanted to change in their communities? Okay, I'd like you to recall these issues. And I'd like you to pick up one neighbor next to you. Just pick up one neighbor. Pick up someone that's next to you. Choose someone next to you. And let that person be your own personal punk. I'd like you to share that issue with your neighbor and share with them as well what you want to replace it with, the solution. And then I want 
your punk, personal punk neighbor to invest one challenge or one question or one sticky question that will help you get started. Are we okay to do that? It's only 60 seconds. <laughs> Please, do try this at home. We have 60 seconds to get us started. Marcelo, my friend, is with us in the room to accompany you with the music. Thank you. Yeah.